Good afternoon and welcome to Across the Fence. I'm Jolay Whitney. Today we're talking about the lifelong learning in the ongoing, voluntary, and self-motivated pursuit of knowledge for either personal or professional goals. We're talking about the University of Vermont's Professional and Continuing Education Program, referred to as PACE. As the need of high school, college students, and working professionals have changed, so too has continuing education. To set the pace, if you will, for today, we're joined by Maureen Hebert. She's the Director of Employer Partnership at PACE. Welcome. Thank you, great to be here. Before we jump into it, it might be easier to start a little more general. Why should somebody sign up for PACE? So we really have a mission of providing accessible, affordable um, education and professional development opportunities from technical skills to leadership skills to everywhere in between. Um, to really support lifelong education. Even pre-pandemic, um, there was a skills gap in this country, and we really wanna be a part of that alignment to help employers really get the skills that they need in terms of their employees. The World Economic Development Forum have said, we really need um, to upskill every six months or so because technology is changing at a rapid pace. Absolutely, and we talk a lot about continuing education more on an in-state perspective, but can you tell me about your in-state and out-of-state opportunities? Sure, absolutely. So we um, really value our role in supporting economic development, employer partners, and supporting communities. We are a land-grant institution. Our mission is to support all 14 counties. Um, what, what we also do is we also provide education um, online, so resources are available across the country and internationally, so that's a growing audience for us. We have students from Alaska to Connecticut and everywhere in between. That's great, and I looked at your website and you have a variety of classes. Can you give me a sense of the sure. range of opportunities you have? Sure, well we serve about 8,000 students annually and hundreds of employers. We have everything from pipeline programs that are pre-college level to summer university. We offer summer academy, um, as well as programming that's specific to sectors like healthcare and manufacturing and technical training to professional development programs. You can take a project management course or a leadership program to graduate level studies as well as um, our OLLI program, which is OSHER Lifelong Learning, and that's for people over 50. Um, to continue uh, with their educational opportunities. And there's a wide variety of resources in that program statewide. And let's dive into some of the specifics. Some of your programs are in healthcare and medicine. Can you tell me about how you yes. look at that? Yes, so very exciting. We work closely with the Larner College of Medicine, the College of Nursing and Health Sciences at UVM, and we've added some new programs this recent year. Um, everything from surgical technology to sterile processing to patient care technician as well as behavioral health technician programs. We offer a post-back pre-med program, so someone who may have graduated a few years ago who's decided to become a physician, they can enter that program. We also offer public health at the graduate level and healthcare administration, and we're working um, directly with the Lerner College of Medicine to provide um, programs and training because these these professionals are licensed so they need to continually get education and training to keep their licensure so we support them with um, updated training and opportunities there as well and we have a physician leadership program so is that like a, a mentorship program where students get to work with physicians we we do have that but this is more for current uh, physicians mm. that are looking to update their skills and um, it's a, a multi-month program. Nice, something to keep mm -hmm. people updated on their updated. knowledge. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so we spoke a little bit about medicine and you mm -hmm. also work with some end-of-life issues. Can you tell me about that? We do. So we have the end-of-life doula program which is actually a, an incredibly um, highly enrolled program, although this summer we're offering another section and that, that currently is, is um, not fully enrolled yet. Um, it is a very popular program. It really provides um, learners with the skills and tool set to support um, families and individuals at the end of life. 
Um, it's been uh, something that has gotten a lot of uh, interest nationally. We had a, a, a organization, a healthcare organization out of Alaska recently contract with us to offer a section just for their uh, facility. Yeah, a little bit more of that, that nationwide opportunity. Absolutely, yeah. What kind of opportunities do you have for people who are maybe not haven't graduated high school yet? We've talked about some adults mm -hmm. some, but. Yeah, so we offer dual enrollment, which is a program that's offered at many institutions around the state, but it's free college courses to high school students. And that gives them a chance to really try before they jump into um, an opportunity at a, at a higher education institution. They can explore career pathways and learn a little bit more about what they want to do and what they're interested in. So they can take up to two free classes. We also offer Summer Academy, which is an intensive four-week program that allows students to really experience what it's like to be on campus. Um, Vermont really does have a high high school graduation rate, but a lower percentage that goes on to post-secondary. And as we've seen in a lot of data, that, that post-secondary opportunity allows you to develop more um, professional development and access a career pathway longer term if you've had something after high school. Uh, recently, there was a study done by um, uh, Georgetown that said that Vermont is like top four in terms of the jobs that are available for um, you really require a baccalaureate. So we wanna be able to offer pathways to meet learners where they're at so they can jump in and have access to affordable opportunities. All right, and we spoke a little bit about, like you were saying, you know, younger people going into college. Can mm -hmm. you tell me about your certificate program for people who are already working in the field? Sure, so the highest um, population that are really higher ed institutions are offering um, nationally, it's that 25 to 35 year range, that's the growth area. And we can offer industry recognized credentials which identify competi competencies in certain areas. And that is a growing area for us. There are a lot of professions that require um, licensure that need regular continuing education and need to keep up to date with not only the knowledge of the sector, but also their organization might be developing and innovating and advancing. So they have to keep up to date with those skills. Okay, and you touched on some leadership training. Can you tell me about yes. what that program is? Yes, yeah, so we offer a variety of leadership courses. We do have one that's specifically for physicians, but we also offer programs um, for individuals that are looking to advance within their careers or within their organization. We also offer programming that's directly for employers, so it can be customized to meet their particular needs. And that, um, so it's a variety of ways that we offer that. The needs assessment that we do with employers really identify what are the certain competencies that they want to upskill their employees. And to go back to what you were saying about the certificate mm -hmm. program, what are the values for an employee and an employer to have that? Yeah, so the certificates really indicate competencies that individuals have and can showcase the skills that they've learned. We talk a lot about technical skills, but those essential skills, or people sometimes call them soft skills, are really core to being a, a successful individual within an, any career path. So that can be things like team building, communication skills, problem solving, conflict resolution. Those are really key to um, being successful within your organization. And it's important, especially you know post-COVID where people were working remotely, we kind of have to relearn how to work together when we're working in person together. Um, and just because I'm not as familiar, can you tell me about what upscaling even is? Upscaling? So if someone has, say, um, you know, acquired a degree or has started a certificate program, but the skills are advancing so rapidly within their profession. For example, healthcare. I mean, it's advanced dramatically in the last few years, manufacturing the same. Manufacturing in Vermont is about 10% of our gross domestic product. And now we have automation and robotics and you know, everything is really computer based. So being able to continuously learn to, you know, be successful in your career, you, it's a constant really. Um, I think I've mentioned, um, you know, Deloitte and the World um, Economic Forum, they're saying that 90% of employers anticipate that their employees are gonna have to upskill within the next few months or next few years. And most of the, um, the, the really critical jobs within the state or within the region tend to require those more advanced skills. 
And from the employer perspective as a business, what are people mm -hmm. expecting from their employees when it comes to stuff like this? Yeah, so they've actually, um, I work with a lot of employers, um, uh, both currently and in my former roles, that they're constantly supporting their employees. They recognize that that's a need, not on, only a business need, but also a retention need to be able to support employees' success. And how do you work with em employers to help direct employees towards programs like PACE? Yeah, so we do um, needs assessments. We can work directly with employers to access grant funding. We can also um, create program pathways or customize programs for employers. But we also have you know, a vast array of programs that currently exist, so we can work with them to determine what are the, the top pinch points for their organization and can provide those courses. And if you're, I mean, a high school student or a working adult and mm -hmm. you maybe can't attend like a conventional classroom, what are the options that you guys have for attendance? Yeah, we have online learning, we have short courses, we have hybrid courses that may have a classroom component and then an online component. We also offer asynchronous learning so someone could go at their own pace um, at the convenience of their own home. So it's really uh, the sky's the limit in terms of accessibility. We also offer credit bearing courses so if someone is looking to to enter degree pathway, we can help them get that jump start. And we've talked about it kind of in and out, but we haven't directly focused on it. Burlington is a, a tech hub, and you've mm -hmm. spoken a lot about how tech yes. is advancing, and that's something that you guys really need to work on. How is, or not, but the something employers need to develop, and how is Pace helping with that? Absolutely. So as I mentioned, manufacturing is really a big part of our gross domestic product, and we want to continue to grow that, particularly the semiconductor industry. And this tech hub designation is really exciting. It's one of only a few nationally that have been designated, and we're focusing on semiconductors as well as the broader manufacturing sector. So the variety of courses that we're gonna bring to bear, including our partners, which are CCV and Vermont State University, we're gonna build out, and VMEC, we're gonna build out a program to really support that industry and help grow it. And through the research that we do, because we're really focusing on advancing and innovating, we're hoping that that can impact the industry nationally as well. All right, and if somebody's interested in getting in touch with PACE, how can they do that? So it's learn.evm.edu. And again, my name's Maureen Hebert. You can call me directly. Um, my contact information is on our website. All right, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you. <laughs> That wraps up our program for today. From all of our crew behind the scenes at WCAX, I'm Jolay Whitney. Have a good one.